Good morning everyone and welcome back to another instalment of our Portuguese barn conversion series. It's super early in the morning, the sun is rising behind us and don't be alarmed if you can hear dogs and gunshots because <laughs> the hunting season in Portugal has just started. And last week's video was rather stressful, it was quite upsetting but this week it's a lot better. <laughs> Fingers crossed anyway. Thank you so much for all your positive comments. They really mean the world to us. They helped us immensely reading through them comments just to pick us up a little bit. You know, there's always gonna be low points in a project like this. It's really cute actually. Even my mom back in the UK messaged me the other night and was like, I'm just reading through the comments on your video and they love you so much. People are saying such wonderful things and really your comments just made us so much happier it yeah. really does make it a lot more bearable yeah they keep us going so thank you so much and we hope you enjoy this week's video we're the indie project b and theo and we've been living and traveling the world in vans for the past six years we're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in portugal to turn it into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cat gingy bear follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home Chickaroos, you ready for an adventure? Can I bring this out? Come on. So I'm just feeding the chickens. This is my morning ritual at sunrise every day. I get up, I let the chickens out and it's kind of shocking actually. I've just suddenly stepped back and looked at them and they're massive. <laughs> There's no denying it now. Betty is 100% a cockerel. She's got the tail feathers, the green tinge to them. She acts like a cockerel, she's massive. She weighs so much more than the other chickens. And I think Mary might also be coming in second as another cockerel. But it's been really lovely to watch them grow, watch their feathers come through and just, just watch them being chickens. So a lot of you guys are gonna be wondering about last week's video and the big storm that rolled in and basically battered our house about. And it was devastating to watch, it really was, but thankfully there's only a small amount of damage and I'm gonna show you in a minute. Them storms are quite unpredictable, they just roll on through. It can happen in the summer, happens a few times through the winter, but generally we have really good weather here so we are lucky. And you know, if we were back in the UK trying to build this, there'd be a lot more rain than there is now. But yeah, come inside. It's quite dark because the Velux windows haven't been fitted yet, but hopefully they're being uh, installed really soon and it will flood the barn full of beautiful natural light. It's really hard to show you guys because the ceilings are so high, but right there you can see where the water has got through the nail and bled through into the cladding. So you can see the black, the black mark and the line that's come down. It's dribbled down the actual chestnut beam. So all that's gonna need to be sanded back. There's some small damage as well on some other chestnut beams and on other parts of the cladding, but it's too dark to really show all of them. But we really did get away lightly with it. As you can see by them clips, I think you'd agree, we got off pretty lightly. And I think that's for the fact that me and B spent so long really preparing this building before the storm. We had a few comments of people saying, you're so unprepared, you don't have tarps. Trust me, I have more tarps right now than probably most people ever own in their whole entire life. A tarp is a sail, it's not breathable. If wind gets up under a, a tarp, it's probably gonna blow the whole roof off. So it's not a good idea using tarps unless you can be 
that they're going to stay on top of the roof and in a storm like that I don't think I could guarantee that was going to happen so we decided to go against the tarp and go for a breathable uh, membrane that wind can go through it and it doesn't turn into a sail but you know we've got days and days of sanding to get the marks out that's fine as long as we don't incur any more damage I'm happy and we can just move forward with this project so overall we did get off quite lightly with the damage it could have been a lot worse it's still quite wet the walls are still very wet and actually the stress is still here because we've already had another day's rain this week our builders had to take the day off because it was just too much rain so we've only managed to put four days of work in with them and there's more rain on the horizon quite a lot of rain for about a week so we really are going as fast as we can, trying as hard as we can, but the weather has got different ideas and we've just got to work around it and just hope that we don't have a repeat performance or if we do, we don't get any more damage. So on last week's video, when I went into the barn mid storm, it was a scary moment because there was so much water inside the barn on the floor. There was also the walls inside were just saturated. They were wet, they were soaked and they still haven't dried out now. So I thought, you know, in the, in the heat of the moment, the wind was blowing the rain through the walls because the pointing is so old. It's basically non-existent. We were always going to repoint the outside walls anyway and the inside. It's a hundred year old building that needs doing but that's not what happened at all. That's never happened before. What actually happened is I noticed after the storm and I, I had chance to come and have a look, this wall had not been finished. So what you have is a big gap here. These walls are actually, uh, they're over half a meter thick walls. So you can imagine if this wall's not in place, all the water was coming down the roof and bleeding into the middle of the wall and then down through all the cracks and then found its way inside the barn. So once it's pointed, it'll be not a problem, but it's not really the pointing that was a problem. It was the fact that this wall hadn't been finished really. So next, Kev is going to be finishing the back wall whilst Jack starts on the veranda at the front of the barn, which is something we have both been incredibly excited about starting because it was an idea that Theo dreamed up such a long time ago and we can't wait to see it in real life with our own eyes. Okay, so there's something that I want to address really quickly and that is the style of the roof that we are building on our barn here in Portugal because we've had so many comments from around the world from people telling us we're doing it completely wrong. Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> we've even had comments from people being so confident that we're doing it wrong saying, look, if you just stop now and redo it like this and overhang the rafters to here, then it will be right. But the problem is, it's done like this for a reason in Portugal. 
we don't build like the rest of the world because of certain climates, the certain rules and regulations and codes. So you have to follow the style of the Portuguese because they know what they're doing. If you drive around Portugal, you won't see any buildings, any stone buildings with wooden rafters hanging over. That's not what's done. But let me show you how it is done in Portugal. So if I lift the Tyvek up, you can see no rafters whatsoever because they are completely hidden behind the wall now, which means they are protected from all the elements and mainly the summer sun. So they won't twist and bend. They are protected as much as possible. And basically the tiles will sit on the tiling battens that go on top of these reapers here. And then the final tile will sit on top of the wall and it will actually overhang. So there will be an overhang keeping the water away from the, uh, the barn, but there is also gonna be guttering as well to catch all of the water and reuse it. Need a hand. All of the joints have now been hand cut so that they can fit all of the beams together to create the veranda frame and the wood we've gone for is super thick and chunky, it's really sturdy so it takes a good couple of people to be able to lift it into place but it looks stunning. Rain has already stopped play for one day this week and our builders came in after that and told us that they wouldn't be able to work the Friday or the following Monday because of a Portuguese government lockdown. The reason for the lockdown as far as I can tell is for something called the Day of the Dead where people travel all over the country to visit their families and have a get together. Obviously in these times the government want to try and stop that so they've done a really a short long weekend lockdown. But I couldn't believe that, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to work and we've already lost a day uh, and had to stop working because of the rain. We don't want to lose any more time. We, we need to crack on and keep moving forward. So I just contacted uh, our solicitor and they said it's completely fine to go to work, which is amazing. It means we can carry on with the project, but my heart nearly stopped. You know, that would be three days this week that we lost and uh, we can't, we can't have that. We need to get these tiles on ASAP. Oh. 
I have been sanding non-stop for the last few days all of the beams that are going to be going out the front for the veranda have got to be sanded first so I've been doing all of them I think I've got about four left to do and I'd love to say that once they're finished that's going to be the end no more sanding for me but <laughs> let's be realistic there's still going to be a hell of a lot more sanding to go on but got to continue This is coming back up off the ground here. Yeah. All right. And you want that to down there? Then? Yeah, just a wee in, man. Guys, look how amazing the veranda look. It's such a big space. This is going to be an area where we spend a lot of time, I reckon. Yeah, yesterday was a fantastic day. They got about two thirds of the beams up on the veranda and it's been really wonderful to see the space completely transform. Me and B are both incredibly knackered, but the show must go on. It's currently Saturday and we've got a lot of painting, staining and preparation for next week we need to keep on moving before the rain comes again which no doubt it's going to and look who's just come to join us it's fernando his new favorite home is under here <laughs> loves hanging out here while we're building <laughs> So here's another angle of the veranda so you can see the the scale of it. It's going to be a beautiful space. Can't wait to get a pizza oven set up outside there. It's going to be really nice. But this is the last time you're going to see it in its natural wood finish because we're about to stain it darker. The chief building inspector has now just turned up on site for an early Saturday morning shift and she turns her back to me as usual. Fernando's just spotted her. <laughs> Into the barn they go. What are you guys doing? <laughs> he just won't leave her alone, but... He's on the veranda. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are you doing? He's scratching our lovely wood. <laughs> <laughs> We're just charging our batteries with a uh, solar charging generator that Fernando's standing on, because we all know he likes standing on solar panels. Don't you? What is it about solar panels that you just love? And uh, Gingy's off and Fernando's following. But we need to do some work, so we're going to leave you guys to it. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of you guys are probably going to be wondering why are we staining this beautiful natural wood a darker colour? And we've had a lot of people ask what wood it is. It's chestnut. It's a lot like oak, I guess, the way that it looks. And we just love it. We're so happy. We spent the extra money and went for the chestnut. It's a beautiful hardwood, but this is going to get a lot of weather. This veranda and the house is south facing. So in the summer, the veranda is designed 
to stop the summer sun hitting the front wall all day and heating up the house in the night. So I think it's going to do the job really well because it's over three meters uh, depth and also we've got a high ceiling in the barn to lose the heat as well. But because it's going to get all of the weather, even the rain, the storms, everything, we thought we'd go for a darker tone because that way when it does weather, I think it will weather more naturally and, and hide any imperfections where if it's quite a light natural wood, you're going to show everything up. So the first thing to do is sand back all of the wood with the finest grit sandpaper we could find in the store and then it's ready to stain. I'm glad that's done. That took way longer than I hoped it would. I think we started at about 10 and now it's one. So it's a good three solid hours of sanding. My hands are still like vibrating, it feels like. <laughs> but it's good to get it done because now we're ready to transform it with the paint and we're really happy with the tester that we did. I don't think we've actually shown you, so it's gonna be a surprise for you to see what it looks like when the paint is on there. So now we really need to get cracking because we're on a time constraint. We need to do one layer today and another layer tomorrow. So we have done a small tester of this stain on a little piece of wood that we really like the look of, but it is slightly nerve wracking mixing it all up and putting it on the entire veranda because we don't know how it's gonna look all in one go, but fingers crossed, it looks as stunning as we hope it will. So, we may, let me just put this in break, we may have brought ourselves a tractor. <laughs> the Passatra was great, it was brilliant, but I think the tractor is a massive upgrade. This is a, a 1978 Kubota, and uh, Kubota, Kubota, I'm not sure, let me know in the comments how you pronounce it, but this thing is a beauty. It fits so nicely into the land as well with the 100 year old barn. We've got the nice old tractor, but this thing is actually a workhorse and, and that is why we would need it because we need to clear our land. I can't get over how photogenic this tractor is. It's just beautiful. And I love the little headlamps at the front. This is a four wheel drive, as I said, 1978. Kabuta L1501DT and it's perfect for our land, absolutely perfect. We have here, which came with it as well, it's a, uh, a brush grass cutter. So there's lots of different names for these things in different countries, you call them different things, but essentially it has a chain that swings around and it breaks up any grass, any brush. I've driven this thing through some pretty serious stuff so far and it hasn't missed a beat, it just keeps on going. It's really, really lovely to drive as well, good fun. Also what came with the tractor is this big transfer box. This means B can stand in the back like the old Portuguese women do with their husbands. It's so cute when you see them driving up and down the lanes and they're standing in the back of the bat box. But this thing is gonna come in really useful for moving. We've got loads of dirt, we've got sand, we've got gravel. And this sharp piece of metal at the bottom means that you can actually just reverse in, drop the front down, bring all the gravel or whatever you wanna move into the box lift it up and then if you pull this it just drops it you can dump it wherever you like so that's going to speed up the process for moving things around for us even big stones we can move with this So 
So Theo's already done a bit of the field and he's gonna take the tractor now onto our bottom terrace. You can just about see the barn peeking behind the trees. And this is a bit where the grass is quite overgrown as you can see. So he's just dropping down the mower and then basically it's just drive. It's kind of amazing how it works. There we go, let's have a look and see. So you can see behind him the trail that it's already cleared through the grass. And it's really good because it doesn't just go through grass, it also goes through like small saplings and stuff like that. It's a chain on the bottom so it can easily just get around anything. It's kind of amazing how much of a difference it's already made over there. It's actually quite exciting to see because we've never been able to make such a dent in this bit here before. We've had strimmers and stuff which obviously can do quite a lot but not this fast. Wow, it's amazing! never thought that cutting grass could literally be so much fun. I'm going to be out on this thing all the time, just making sure the grass is nice and low, making sure everything's clear. It's changed the game because I just did two passes, probably like a couple minutes, and it would have took me probably half an hour to strim the same area. It's absolutely crazy. I can't imagine not having a tractor now. Well, check this out. The tractor did a cracking job. You can see the strip that it's cleared out here. It's going to be worth its weight in gold. And I'm sure you can still hear him, but Theo's off on the tractor, going to continue cutting grass and doing tractory things. And I think I'm going to end this week's video here. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been all systems go, and we can't wait to share with you next week's update.